What's up, everybody? Jazzy Bell here from Women in Hip Hop Podcast. And on this show, we focus on the many talents and influences from women within the culture. And today is going to be an amazing show because I have two amazing guests. Right here to my right is my girl. Okay, she is formerly a media personality at Hot 97. She mm -hmm. still does her thing, and she's one of the best artist managers in the game. Shout out to mm -hmm. Zayna Ray. Y'all say hello. Zayna! <laughs> so, so what's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here. I'm grateful to be here, as always. You know, this is the second time around, you know what I'm saying? Watching you grow. Mm -hmm. proud of you, so you call me, I'm here, baby. Thank you, boo. Mm -hmm. And to my far right, Okay, it's one of my favorite people in the world, one of my favorite journalists, and he's also the executive producer of the MTV Effect. Y'all say hello to Doma T. Pongo. The handsome. <laughs> wow, great. <laughs> 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 the handsome. <laughs> Both of you guys have been on my show before, so I appreciate you guys coming back on this special episode of me giving my top 10 favorite female rappers in 2023 alone okay so when y'all understand this oh. list don't be like where's well, the little kim it's like did she drop an album in 2023 right only 2023 <laughs> only 2023 only 2023 yeah. guys man it's dope to be on with y'all by the way and you were on the first episode of women in hip-hop i heard it was it was the first episode very first, the very first. really yes oh no yes. that's fire i so didn't I feel realize like that. i'm a part of history right here i think, <laughs> I think we all just do it for history you know we yeah. do it for the culture but, that, but thank you i wish i didn't realize that yes my first episode was with zayna ray that was back in january of 2017 so just a week from today yeah. mm. it's gonna be seven years Come on, man. Such a long time. Just, just shout out to you, Jazzy. The I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, too. And Doma T, you was here a, a couple of episodes ago. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's right. We, we discussed a couple of things. People had a lot to say, <laughs> but I think it was one of my very best and successful episodes. Thank you. So thank I appreciate you. you lending your talents with me here of again course. today. And another reason why I appreciate you being here is because you're very well versed when it comes to women in hip hop. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. I, l I love uh, I love any MCs, but I particularly love the way a lot of the women who have like planted their flag, the mm -hmm. way they navigate the game because they got it's a lot more that they tend to have to prove, have to do. So anybody who cuts through is usually exceptionally talented. So yes, you know, it's dope to have this combo with you. But in particular, you worked on some projects where it was geared towards just female rap. Talk about that real quick. Yes, we did the Woman in Rap show uh, mm -hmm. at MTV. Shout out to Nia Brown, black woman producer and social media manager at, at MTV, put together this Woman in Rap showcase. We had Flyanna Boss, Lola Brooke, and Mona Leo, and, uh, and I hosted mm -hmm. it. And uh, we had fans, super fans in the room. It was turned. It's on YouTube somewhere. Just put in Women in Rap MTV. Mm -hmm. You know, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, a connoisseur of this music thing. You, you know? are. So, so it's, it's dope to have this convo with you. Hey, you're kind of a big deal. One of my favorite moments this year was a moment that went viral with you and Sweetie. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Women in Rap. Right? <laughs> Where she kind of butchered the whole t reading of the teleprompter. Respect to you, Sweetie. But this just ain't for everybody. I've been trying to tell people as a media person that this is not easy this mic and the reading of the teleprompter is not for the faint of heart mm -hmm. and although you dropped the ball shout out to Doma T for holding you down because I feel like he did a good look yeah, to the side <laughs> good. I hope you're expecting a comment or reply <laughs> I'm expecting you to elaborate on how it was in that moment because you were all over the place did you were right next to her in that moment like yes Okay. All right. I'm it wasn't like first shout out to Sweetie. Happen. She, I see why they call her Sweetie because she is a sweetheart for real. Yes. I don't think people really understand that when you when you meet her and you work with her. She's so he sweet. had a disclaimer though. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> she, yeah. Not later, no. Right, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you you know when you because you done live radio. Both y'all have done yeah. live radio. You know when a moment is about to be the moment, and sometimes the people around you don't really know. Like mm -hmm. the producers might, you know, they tr maybe they try to placate you and be like, "Oh, that was fine. You know, it was just a little." I knew it because I know the internet seizes on half a second. And coming from radio, mm. half a second of silence sounds like five minutes to me. It's called S dead, dead air. Dead air. Dead, 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 air. dead air. You know, you, it's a little more forgiving mm -hmm. on television, but you can see the face. So, mm -hmm. you know, especially when, when my, my sis was like, oh, I was like, dang. But she wouldn't just, if she wouldn't have said, oh, we probably wouldn't have noticed that she had lost her place on the, on the, on the thing. But as, uh, immediately after that, I was like, y'all ain't. No, it wasn't enough, like... Critique? Yeah, critique or, you The know, producers, they come to her and say, okay. Maybe, maybe they did out of earshot of me, but I, I felt like... I'm like, I don't know if they know it. My, my assistant was there, too. Shout out to Paris. She was like... <laughs> she looked at me like, gee, I was like, ah. Do you think it was just, just nerves, or you think she really couldn't see? Like, 
I think it was um, when you're an artist, I think you're used to being interviewed in an ad lib. So maybe you know you lose mm. your place in the Aww. in the in the teleprompter. That's in so sweet. <laughs> you're blaming yourself for throwing her off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. This is why we right. love Doma yeah. T here. And she's so sweet. <laughs> yes. That's why they call her sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> Shout I out to you, sweetie. sweetie. Yes. yes. Sweetie. She's been on the podcast before too as well. So we obviously love you here. Again, hope. this just ain't for everybody. <laughs> Can we agree? <laughs> so Honestly, we as professionals. We're just giving you your flowers. I yes. appreciate uh, you know, it. I, I received Doing your them. thing in that in that moment. I and that facial them. expression was hilarious. <laughs> Okay, so again, with this episode, we're giving my top 10, just mine, so do not, you know, ridicule these beautiful people over here on the couch. It's just I want all the smoke. I don't care. Oh, I know that's right. (laughs) Well, (laughs) puff, puff, pass. Okay, (laughs) we want all the smoke. All right, so I want to give a huge shout out to one of my other favorite people in the world is B-Dot. Shout out to Brian B-Dot Miller. He's known every year for dropping his top 10 (laughs) favorite rappers. Of, t- of the year, and I don't think he dropped his list yet. He can't he just dropped it. Yeah, like he just dropped it. Uh, like couple, as of this taping, maybe two days ago. I forgot. No, he ain't no been women dropping. on his list, by the way. Okay, <laughs> and that's the reason. <laughs> great point, and that's the reason why I created my list because again, he is a good friend of mine, and I always get yeah. on him. Like, where are the women? Yeah. And he's a self-proclaimed misogynist, so I teased <laughs> him every day about that, and it's kind of a running joke in our friendship. So shout out to B Dot for mm-hmm. inspiring this. And I'm gonna use his criteria as to like what he uses to base his list off mm-hmm. of. Okay. So it's based off of skills, rapper's lyrical ability, performance, mm-hmm. showmanship on album, and presence, relevance, and consistency throughout the year. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right, so let's get it started. <sighs> Here's my number 10. And the Libra in me just couldn't decide, so this is a tie. I gave it to two ladies, Lady London and Lola Brooke. Mm. A tie. A tie for 10. Okay. I think Lola should be higher on the list. I think I I put Lola higher on the list because if we're talking about showmanship Mm -hmm. and consistency and, like, presence, Mm -hmm. I feel like she was more present in in the, you know, in the zeitgeist than a lot of other people that you know might be considered like but as far as skill lady london i put her like you know between you know the seven and ten slot because yeah. she ain't too many that could touch her on that microphone lyrically I think she just, a beast on yeah. that yeah. lyrically in that pennies, thing. Yeah. yeah i think she just probably is her moment hasn't come yet as far as like the broader fan base getting in tune with her uh-huh um but it's just a matter of time Okay, yeah. what do you think? I, think? I mean, I think Lola, she she needs her own place because she, you know, she did her thing this year. She, we know her, like we know that little person with the with the fitted hat. Yeah. We know her that deep voice. You know, she has created that that presence, and I think that she's reminded a lot of uh, you know hip hop connoisseurs about like you know old school hip hop and like the Kim days and the Foxy days, and mm-hmm. it brings back that true New York essence. So like. I think we got to give her her own space because you know London is still still on her way up. Like mm-hmm. that's my girl. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Shout out to Lady London, um, and her pen game is crazy. But yeah, I think Lola deserves a little bit higher. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we we can we can start Lady there because you know I think next year might be her year. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe as I further go along with my list, y'all can understand why. But as far as album, shout out to Lady London. Her album was called Soul. That came out in November. Dennis' daughter, Lola Brooks' album. Mm-hmm. Um, that came out in November as well. And I just feel like their trajectory as far as their careers, this year, this year alone, not, you know, her hit that she that she has with Billy B. We're not talking, don't play with it, don't play mm-hmm. with it, don't play right, with right. it. And I think when y'all think of Lola Brooke, we're still on that. Are we no, not still on that? That's a fact. We are and still we, there. We are. You know, shout out to being in New York. I know we see her everywhere when it yeah. comes to presence, to your point. But we're talking about to worldwide. the broader, worldwide, worldwide spectrum. And I don't think either one of them has really gotten there, right? And I look at consistency, I feel like they both have been very consistent, not just with dropping the albums around the same time, but their features mm-hmm. that they have. They have one with each other, with Sierra. Um, pop shit, I love Dylan, what a rich nigga. Like, <laughs> come, <laughs> come on, like that, that nigga. was this year, <laughs> that was, viral that was a whole TikTok moment yeah. like mm-hmm. everybody had that as their background you know what i mean yeah. 
piece yeah. with it when it comes to their videos. Um, she did do something with Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah, with Dreezy. Shout out to Shy yeah, Towns. Shout um, to by the I way, gonna, yeah. I was gonna say Lady London verse on that. Yeah, yeah, went so crazy. Went and so not only stupid. that, if I will be honest, mm -hmm. I didn't really like Lola's album. And and I was gonna get there I did again. Not like, I think y'all do give go ahead. Lady all of the credit on the album. The whole the signs, now the getting the time. features. Just the thought process that she put into that body of work, we gotta mm -hmm. give her that. Yeah, Zane, I was just gonna say that too with Lola. I'm like, that's the only reason I wouldn't put her in that top five for mm -hmm. this year was because the album, and I only re really think it was her fault so much as the beats were a little repetitive. It was very like Brooklyn Drill sound. Uh, it just didn't. It didn't give us nothing new for her. Like it didn't, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so now we agree with me okay, a little bit. Right. Okay. Right. No, okay, <laughs> Jazzy. We get it. I think, again, because we see her doing her thing in the streets, and she's very present when it comes to marketing herself and promoting herself. But when it comes to just the music, mm -hmm. again, the album, the lyrical ability, she has it, but where's the diversity? You know what I mean? And I'm not even blaming it so much all on her. But shout out to the teams out there. I feel like y'all got to get here in the rooms with the right producers, the right writers even. You know, everybody get a little help. I'm not knocking your pen game. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is, you know. So, well, And I can, also think it's the same with Lady London as well. I'm not going to front. The Soul album, she's great. She's one of the best writers. But I feel like Soul kind of didn't resonate with the audience. The whole astrology kind of angle she was going with it, I thought it was a great idea. But I, don't, I think it kind of fell flat. Do you think, so you think Lola Brooke has some work on the pen game to do? Yeah, Not just the diversity of it, whether okay. it's different producers, whether it's different writers, different features mm -hmm. to come on and, and kind of show her outside of the drill light. Because she's ill. And to be honest with you, I think y'all need to give Dennis' daughter another listen because I think it's better than what you think. I just, again, don't think she has anything that surpassed that. Don't play with don't it. Don't play with it. it. Don't play with it. You don't think that that record with her and um Bryson Tiller saved her? Yeah, and that and that, but that's an, is are we just gonna and that's just one, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And uh -huh. that's why they're tied because even with Lady London, pop pop uh pop shit was the one for me, okay. and she did do something with Jeremiah as well. You see how they both have mm -hmm. him on, mm -hmm. uh, and then Bryson Tiller as well. That's crazy. I never really thought about that, but. Now you understand the logic as to why they're tied. Yes, Jazzy, okay. we get this. Okay, we, get we this, got Jazzy. you. We got you. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. <laughs> Number nine goes to Coyle Ray. Coyle Ray, her album Coy, 16 songs that came out in June of this year. She just dropped the EP in August called Blue Moon. It's like about five songs on there. Uh, Baby Don't Hurt Me. Baby, don't hurt me. She remixed that record. Y'all faces. Okay, just tell me what y'all think about. No, we we. Coil I'm let you finish. You do a good a good setup. <laughs> my body, you know, she sampled that. Um, it's my party. I can cry about. You know that that whole. Even yeah. in the setup, you I'm already. I'm letting you finish. I'm letting what? you finish. It wasn't really for me to finish. <laughs> I was just y'all faces kind of got screwed up. So I was giving. Here's the thing about Coil Ray. I'll take it. <laughs> I think she is an undeniable star. I think that she's very self-sufficient, so I respect any woman out there that's not trying to be a Nepo baby, you know? And she really has her own look, mm -hmm. you know, that separates her from the rest. And as far as relevancy, I feel like she has a fan base that really fucks with her. Um, the album, to me, needs some work. I feel like the samples is a bit redundant. Again, I just feel like it's just like, all right, like we got Nicki Minaj with everybody, but she made it her own. I feel a lot of samples that she has on her album, she didn't really make it her own, mm -hmm. but she's very relevant in, in today's time, and I think she has a great sound. Yeah, that song, I'm catching up with that. That came out this year. Yeah. I'm catching up. Mm -hmm. I think At so. The bottom, yeah. make yeah. one of mm -hmm. It's on a Koi yeah. album. I, okay. I think you you said exactly what I was thinking because even as you were talking about the album, you named the samples. It's it's overkill with the sample. She okay. got the Man's World sample with the James Brown flip. Like almost every record on the album is a flip, and it just makes her seem not as uh, original or inventive mm -hmm. as as she could be. And as an MC, um, even though she does freestyle, she's gotten a little better. I remember Double XL freestyle was wasn't you know up to par. She's gotten better as an MC, but it's hard for me to put her on a list 
even at the top ten slots when I don't think her pen game is mm. really there. I, I look at her as an artist. Okay. And I think that she has all of the intangibles that an artist can have. She got an it factor. You want to pay attention to her. Mm-hmm. Even the songs that come out. Even every song on Koi album kind of plays like a playlist almost. Like, it's not like they're bad songs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, very trendy, very poppy. It seems like she's chasing that next hit. But I don't see her as like an, a rapper that, you know, can stand the test of time as an MC, mm. as an artist. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I feel like they give you they give Koi a hard time. Okay. Like I mean, not to say like that, just because like you know, I just appreciate hard work, you know. And one thing I can say about Absolutely. Koi is that that girl works her ass off. Mm-hmm. And like from you know my introduction to to music, like she's been in every studio, like from the beginning, like she been around. She was mm-hmm. like the little homie, but the girl that was right. just getting the features with everybody that was working her way up. And so I think that that's why, like, I try to give her, like, her flowers, you know? Because yes. she could have, I feel like we didn't really know she was Benzino's no daughter. That part. Until she blew up, you know that, what I'm saying? That, that, and that. Uh-huh. Everybody walked with my daddy is this. You know how to say, my daddy is that. Mm-hmm. So I, I give it to her because she's done that. And I feel like she's been able to create, like, her own just, like, lane. So, like, I respect when you say, like, she's an artist because TikTok's crazy. She could be cooking. She's the skinny girl with the, you know, she got short hair. She got, like, whatever. Mm-hmm. She just, she's able to exude, I think, anything that she wakes up to do. Okay. She's almost, to me, like a doja, but, like, yeah. like a cutter, younger Ex- version. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, she can be everything and anything. Yes. Yes. But I do feel like, unfortunately, we'll get to this conversation in a second because I know it's going to come up. But okay. Like, between the Glorilla Sexy Red Her. Yes. Correlation. <laughs> it feels like there can only be one, and I think that that's oh. what the problem is, that it's not fair that. That's the that's the problem with the industry. We'll get there, in, but, in general. but <laughs> yeah, yeah. but yeah, but even not to jump ahead to that conversation, but uh, even as you named, you know, a Glorilla like Glorilla can rap. You know, she can rap, and Koi, she can make great songs. Mm. And so I'm not knocking her. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and she's been putting out a body of work she, this year. She's she been consistently. Yeah, we just talked about Lola, right? And we uh-huh. were saying we want Lola to be an artist. Cause she's we just do. technically rapping. It's like so the perfect. It's com- like everybody that wants to rap, we want them to be an artist. Everybody want to be an artist, be like, but she not a rapper. But as we go up this like, list, like, the yeah. closer we get to number It'll one, there are some artists that are able to do both. Mm-hmm. There you, you go. Know, and so, and yeah. now y'all see why they ten and nine. Okay. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. I gotta give a correction. I just thought about it. Okay. I don't know if B dot dropped his list of 2023 best rappers. I think he, he did. did best albums. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you said that earlier. It was just on my mind. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, I guess there is a difference. Anyway. He did best album, and he did 23 out of 23. So 23 of his favorite, favorite songs, songs in 2023. Okay. Okay. That's why I said he'd been yeah. dropping list after he list, but, brother, we waiting on the one. Oh, the yeah. big list. Okay, yeah. Waiting okay. on the one. But in the meantime, exactly. in between time, here's mine. Okay. <laughs> <Right>. Number eight. <laughs> I don't know how y'all going to feel about this one. Bia, Bia. Bia, Bia is number eight for me. I like Bia a lot. I think okay. She, she remind me of, um, of Lady London in terms of the voice. I feel like Bia got one of them ill voices. L- Lady London got an ill voice and delivery. Uh, Bia is always interesting. You know what I'm saying when I hear on the record. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't hear the full album though, so I got to abstain from the larger part of the conversation. Yes. But I heard a lot of the records from it, the singles from it. Even mm-hmm. the, I think this did the song with Cole come out in 22. With uh, Cole. With J. I think Cole. It came out this year. Let me see. Yeah, mm-hmm. it might have been top of the year or mm-hmm. late last year, mm-hmm. but um, that London record with Cole was one of my favorites. You know, I think I think she's an ill artist. I think she's safe. Yeah, I think B is so dope. I think she's super underrated too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she's definitely another one that I've seen grinding for a very long time. For a long time. Great personality, great attitude. She's uh-huh. just like one of them cool Cali vibe girls. I don't even know she's from Cali, but she's acclimated into that Cali vibe. Yeah. But. That's funny, yeah, I can see her being synonymous with, with LA, but she's, I think she's from Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she's definitely, like, just super cool, and you are right, like, she be coming with some stuff, but then it's like... I also what? think she transcends hip-hop. I think she could tap into other markets as well, where she could get really pop, you know, doing um, songs with other people. I She also did a song with Busta Rhymes called Beach Ball that I thought was really cool mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, when it dropped really in the good. summer. Um, millions and millions and millions yeah. is one of my faves. 
Uh, shout out to Dee Dee Leaks for being in that video. Who's you bitches is mad. Bling, bling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. That was a whole moment. Yes. Um, Milano, that was a, had a crossover appeal. I forgot who's on that song with her. But that, to me, speaks to what we talked about just a second ago when it comes to artistry and being a full-fledged artist and being able to appeal not only to, like, our people and mm-hmm. hip-hop and the true essence of hip-hop but to also cross over and be an artist where everybody else can love you as well and i think bia bia has that and she yeah. was very consistent this year yeah and i think that i think that you, just because you had a big record and mm-hmm. you had a feature mm-hmm. with Nicki minaj i don't i just don't think it's over for her like i think that she just she gonna creep up on us that's fair yeah that's and fair. those two was kind of neck to neck for me bia coiler ray to your point like the Nicki minaj feature it, it does help when you get co-signed from people like yeah. that and the fact that they got on her in particular got on a record with y'all y'all didn't need her neither one of y'all coy and bia like that whole lot of money in this was Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nikki hopped on that and did her thug thizzle but baby you didn't need her so i love artists like that when they can just you know sustain a a dope position in women and shout out to bia's voice too like for real yeah i love it Mm -hmm. it's something about like it's it's a nice modern tone it's not too aggressive it's Mm -hmm. not too light it's just it's right where it needs to be shout out to you bia baby and and, and to your point earlier uh Mm -hmm. one last thing i love when um when artists have a big moment sometimes you see them hoard material because they are afraid that they can't Follow up that moment. We're going to talk about who that is. There's <laughs> 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 been so a couple of them and <laughs> doing that. that. Hey, like, girl, know, when you going to drop a new album, I'm not sis? Gonna lie. I think this is why a lot of women in rap, like we talk about misogyny and hip hop, all of that is true. Yeah. And that's why a lot of women don't get their shine. But women don't drop as frequently as men do. And that's why a lot of these women, that, that women that's on my list, they're on there because I feel like they're not yeah. afraid to drop. To drop, drop. exactly. Mm-hmm. And they are consistent, whether it be they out an album or not, but they're featured on a lot of records, and they're killing it yeah. on these features. Yeah. So, so far, the ladies that I named, especially if we go back to number 10, Lady London and Lola Brooke, those features, like, they yeah, hopped yeah, on yeah. So, so many, many songs. That's a fact. To stay consistent along with dropping an album, and to your point, mm-hmm. it's hard for a lot of artists to, be able to do that for whatever reason. Maybe it is because they're scared. Well, yeah, and it's also so m- many other things have to click with women in order for them to pop on. You know, the look got to be together. The rollout has to be together. You're not expecting all of these different things from, you know, Kendrick necessarily. Well, he's such a big name. But True. You, you know, a lot of things have to align for women because you expect them to be artists in a way. We even talked about it now. Like, some of these people, if they were men and they just rap good, we would still had a criticism, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, that they didn't cross over, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But we'd be like, you know, you just rap well, that's it. Like, yeah, we'll leave it alone. You'll leave it alone. We Same don't care if you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care if you stank, you ain't shaved today. Come we don't on. care if you're just wearing a sweatsuit. Like, but the ladies, to your point, they have to have a we lot have of a other things. A lot clicking. of moving parts. No, that's we, a fact. Because yeah. I'm not going to lie, I gave Lola a hard time. Like, honestly, like, just being a New Yorker, I gave her a hard time. Why? Like, I just felt like, yo. You've been grinding for so long. Like, I want you to have this moment. Like, mm-hmm. I remember, like, hearing when she came out with Future at, I think, uh, mm-hmm. it was either Barclays or Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you supposed to have the biggest, longest fur dragon. It's just city. Like, I want you to be larger than life. And you're mm-hmm. right. I would never say that about a guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would never say, yo, oh, Fab went up there and he was just <laughs> too drippy and ain't nobody want to <laughs> see him just grab his, right. you know, <laughs> and, hold, and hold the mic. We will never say that about we'll a guy. Like, that, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Fab. This is not personal. But <laughs> yeah, you can even go kiss him at, at, you know at the garden. Like, yeah, chemos and Tim's. Yeah, it was like, but it's cool. like, but for like the women. girls, it's yeah. like, yo, but she didn't get her chain yet. And she, her weaves ain't popping. Or, even for me today, I'm like, oh, the lace ain't lace. I gotta make sure, you know, but that's really something that we, I guess, I don't know if we internalize that ourselves or if that's just something that's kind of just no it's the pressure on us, to be pressure perfect on us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the and pressure. women within the culture so much they would drag you in those comments her lace is showing mm-hmm. her lashes don't look good mm-hmm. she need to lose weight she needs to gain weight, weight you yeah. know she don't have a butt she just yeah, yeah. forcing so, people to get on that operating table and do bbls like it's so much pressure so again to your point to be faced with that and to say fuck it i'm still gonna put on music, music. i'm still gonna show up to blow up and that's why I rock with the who? Women in hip hop. Damn. Number seven. Y'all ready for this one? I hope so. Lay it on us, mama. It's <laughs> so one of my on faves. I would love to put her higher on the list. I mean, it's my list. I probably should have. But <laughs> the ones prior to her or above her on the list, I, I'm, I'm confident that, you know, they should be there. Okay. Number seven goes to Flo Millie. What, she dropped this year? 
She did. Okay, well, she initially <laughs> dropped. <laughs> I don't know it, but I know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Um, Let me see. So oh, that's Never Lose Me. Did Never Lose Me. Okay, yeah, that's what, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to that record. Just yesterday, I want to say, she entered top 100 with that record. It's her first time oh, hitting the charts with all the songs she's ever put out. It was Never Lose Me that did it for her. I think it's like in the 80s, but since she won't air. So so congratulations. Thing, isn't that a <laughs> remix? Yeah. Or is that her song? That's her song. Oh, no. Like the, the, the beat. Yeah. Or like I want to say it is a sample, and honestly, I've listened to all these albums. Y'all got sampled me out. It's a lot of samples for a, a lot of these. I don't albums. know if Millie dropped enough for her to be that high on the list, dog. Are you dead ass? Like this? Well, refresh me though. I'm, I'm cool with being wrong. Okay, so but you I don't know if she dropped enough. You still here, ho? That's that's the album. Now I want to say initially came out in 2022, 2022, but she did an extended version. So you know how that goes. She added some songs, so that was released this year. Okay, 20 songs was on there. Um. This is why. Flo Millie's like a dozer. Okay, okay. She's not, but she is. Okay, break it down. Yeah, that's an interesting take. Hold on. (laughs) Should be in the run of all these motherfuckers. Uh We know that. You sit down and listen. This bitch should. Like, in all reality, the only person that could go go up against Nicki Minaj right now is Doja. I say that. (laughs) But they won't give her that, That's cause those are gonna shave her eyebrows. Those are gonna Doja do gonna weird do shit. Yeah, yeah. She not. She gonna come with like the body skinny like this. And she she gonna do whatever yeah. she wanna do. You uh-huh. know, like she's kind of like the Lady Gaga of hip hop. Hip hop. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. And mm-hmm. then and then it's like we wanna give her a hard time, cause she's also mixed. You know, and she kind of grew up in that whole like web world of like people Showing in lives and doing weird. Well, shit. she was very yeah. problematic. <laughs> we're 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 not. She was very problematic, and so I feel like yeah. when she does get a a hard time or a bad rep, it's warranted. She has done some very problematic things. When it comes to that in particular, you know, using the N word to some white folks on a damn racist chat, mm-hmm. you know that it's hard for me to look past that. But I do. I Let me not say good. I do. It's still hard for me, <laughs> but I listen to that girl, and I think she's such an amazing talent. Yeah. And so you feel like Flo Millie is along those lines. Yeah, mm-hmm. like Flo Millie's that she's type. Like she's like more like a pop kind of more so yeah. artist. But her manager is Ebony, who also managed Gunna Future. I'll give her a flower. Oh. And that's why I feel like she's crossing over in another space because like we, a lot of women in hip hop, mm-hmm. you know, we, we look at our other women in hip hop and mm-hmm. we see them doing things. And I think along with the record also doing good, that's what's doing it for her. But yeah. she does kind of have like this annoying voice and she kind of has this like pop vibe and, but it works for her. Like and it's it works. Unique, yeah. not annoying. <laughs> no, it is. No. I, I will say it to me at it's least. Annoying. I, I, lo- it's annoying. I, I got it. it, it not to me. I People say that about it. Lady London. I, I can't I've listen to it the whole, the okay. whole car ride. Here's the thing with Flo Millie. If I could just break down some of her singles that she yeah. did this year to you, because you say you're not too familiar. Yeah, oh, you yeah, feel like she hasn't done enough. She, like she hasn't dropped this year. By the way, I'm a, I'm a big Flo Millie fan as a human, too. She's an artist who knows who she is. Mm. And when you talk to her, she has a clear understanding of why she's doing records a certain way. And I think a lot of women on the list and a lot of women in hip hop are chasing hits, chasing different things. I feel like when she's done her albums, she's been like, yo, I. I was a big fan of New York on the show, so I had her in these interludes, I had her in these skits, and so she really has a a clear focus. So I think she's gonna be around for the long haul. I just don't know that I remember her dropping frequently this year. Well, even to your point, I collaborate a little bit on that. She is like a pop culture princess to me, right? She loves the reality TV, she's consistent with mimicking that part of our culture. Um, and I'm all about an artist knowing who the fuck they are. Yes. And the rollout to a lot of her music has been very consistent. Yeah. Correct. Um, but, you know, Never Lose, like I said, we talked about that record, uh, BGC, Bad Girls Club. Again, mm-hmm. giving a nod to a well-known yeah. reality yeah. TV show. Yeah. Uh, Big Mad with Eye Candy, Chocolate Wayne, One Margarita, Sexy Red Fitty, the rapper was on there. Uh, Fruit Loop, Take It Up with Nila, and Blow the Whistle. I want to say Blow the Whistle is initially when she started coming out with singles this particular year, when she kind of remaked the whole Too Short, Blow the Whistle. Mm -hmm. And I think with her not only being consistent with who she is, I think I I love that she sits in her confidence as a chocolate sister in an industry that really hypes up colorism. 
or perpetuates colorism, I would yeah. say, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I'm a fan of Flo Millie. Oh, and yeah, when it comes yeah, to showmanship was. on the album, she shows up and she shows the fuck out. Mm-hmm. So again, lyrical ability, she has that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the showmanship performance, showmanship on the album, consistently shows up. Mm-hmm. She doesn't She doesn't miss a beat yeah. to me. And as far as relevancy and consistency, mm-hmm. I named down some singles. I want you to go home and do a little more research. But yeah, You Stare Here Ho, it came out, extended version this year, last year initially came out. Even before that, it was kind of a play off of You Stare Here Ho. I think it was like, Did Ho, You, you Still Here Ho. Did you have a song or something <laughs> like a remix with Nardo Wick or something like that? And it was like mad other people. I feel like I just saw that in the blogs recently too. Oh, see? That's, had it's a lot. That's why I thought that that, that, that verse from I'll Never Lose Me was from that song, but it's not. Okay. okay. Um, so you getting her hits, hits mixed up. You know what I mean? That's yeah, how consistent I, I feel say, my girl is. Past maybe like month and a half, I've definitely been seeing her heavy. So I feel like next year might be. And people have been rooting for her, and that speaks to her yeah. relevancy. I feel like she has a fan base that um, supports the hell out of her, and she feeds that. She's not trying to teeter and do what everybody else is doing. And that's why doing. I give her the Doja yeah. comparisons, because that's the thing, too. Doja had her own core fan base that mm-hmm. locked in with her. They understood her, and that's how I feel like it is with Flo Millie. I feel like now we're getting, you know, the hit mainstream hip-hopers are getting her now, but uh-huh. she, been, she could pack out a show by herself. Absolutely. Speaking of a show, I went to a show with uh, Flo Millie performing, and it knocked me out of my fucking seat. Yeah. And that's when I was like, oh, yeah. just because, and this is the thing, this is why I love doing this list. If you hear these names and you screwing up your face like, I don't know who that is, please get familiar. Yeah, and absolutely. then you will understand, okay, she's dope. That's what I'm here for. I want to expose y'all to different artists. It's going to be names on here that's obviously, you know, well-known. But Flo Millie is one of those ones that's going to surprise you guys in the future. So look out mm-hmm. for her, I feel. Can I give some honorable mentions along that vein? Uh, and that, that's, I wasn't texting. That's why I was looking at my phone. Which oh, I know what you was <laughs> doing. Yeah. You a journalist, uh, baby. Yeah. Investigative journalist <laughs> at that time. <laughs> Do your investigation. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was thinking of who, who, what other artists in that class. Uh-huh. Uh, Maya the Don is much newer. Uh, but I think Maya the Don and uh, Ken the Man are two other artists that I, I'd say kind of remind me not even sound wise but just fit in that pocket of you know that time is coming you know that time mean? is coming yeah yeah so i love that you said out. that yeah. i was actually going to have a segment on there for that so i'm glad you mentioned their names because okay. they're going to come up again later, okay okay for sure okay. number six i don't know how y'all gonna feel about this one she did not drop an album this year i know who it is probably but i feel she's again these singles she's been very consistent with the features and you can't deny this girl's relevancy. She was she just did a cover of Double XL. She put on some other women like Maya the Don, Flo Millie, mm-hmm. okay. Mona Leo, just to name a few. Mm-hmm. Number six goes to Lotto. Okay. okay, okay. I'm not mad at that oh, at oh, all. Oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good reception. I'm not mad at that Drink at all. to that. <laughs> I, yeah. I thought maybe she would have been a little higher, but because she like didn't drop an album this year. Thank you. Because okay, she didn't want. drop an album this year. So I, I I feel that for that reason. I let you go. Oh, not the side eyes, no, no, sis. No, no, no. I, I'm giving her. This is her year. You know what I'm saying? Like Ooh. last year might have not been her year. She Even when she dropped the, the album, like, but put it on the floor. You said that that alone, right? Period. I mean, she's pretty high on the list for not dropping an album. And I, and I'm biased on uh on Lotto because you know I'm from Chicago. When she jumped on Mouse Tool, I'm like, that. Man, mm-hmm. come on, man. Mm. You know, even, you know, people had, I liked her verse. You know what I'm saying? But I think that, you know, her giving, like, going to going to the trenches and, and doing a record with a sister from Chicago, like, that's that's how you, you know what I mean? But period, that's become her thing, you yeah. know? And I like that for her. Like, yeah. don't go back and forth. Go do what they don't do. Go work. Go mm. work. Go do what yeah, they don't do. Doing. Go work. Mm-hmm. And she could rap her ass off. That's I don't know why people don't. Lyrical like, ability. Come on. She, she got skills. I mean, we watched and her grow up. Like, no matter what, we watched her grow up. She was on the show, you know, um, with Jermaine Dupri. And I think that, like, it's time to give her a credit. Yeah. You know? I think they gave mm-hmm. her a hard time. Light skin, pretty girl. She thinks, like, nah, she got it. Yeah. She she worked hard. The whole mulatto thing at yeah. one point forced yeah, her to change her name. Like, Man, bro, no, we no. worked. She worked. Like, that pen crazy crazy and even oh. if it's not she's making sure that it's crazy so uh-huh. you know you got to give it to those people that do it like mm-hmm. some people don't want it and then it still be whack whatever's come out her mouth like i'm excited for lotto now yeah lotto when everybody asks me who's the one for you i always say lotto like mm-hmm. who's the one that i feel or people feel that will 
be the one to take over this rap game exactly that would be here down the line you know when people are showing love to the Nicki Minaj's Mm -hmm. and the Little Kim's and the Foxy's the Queen Latifah's of the world carry the torch I bank on Lotto and then I get people that's like really I'm like yeah what the fuck is wrong with you People always forget, like, when you actually sit down and listen to most of the great female MCs, I think that the thing that resonates the most with them is that they all know their history. They yeah. all know where, they it, all came know where it came from. You know that's what I'm saying? Thing. And they and they, and they 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 pay homage to all of those people, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the most important thing because, like, it's cool to be whoever at, that's hot at the time, but you're right. Like, when it's all said and done, like, who's going to really know the history of all these records and who did this? Like, connect the dots exactly. to the younger people and the older people. I think she will care enough to do that. I now think Zayna, the only reason some uh, people might, um, not even just Lotto, but, like, when they're looking at this generation and saying, mm-hmm. who's going to stand the test of time? Mm-hmm. I think because a lot of these artists are still building, they're still early in their discography, we're not learning a lot about them as people, mm-hmm. and we're not seeing the depth of, like, topics. Right, like so. When you when you talk about the Kims, the Queen Latifahs, the MC Life, the, it was storytelling. There were topics. That's why I love, even though we had the critiques of the album. That's why I love that uh, Lola did Dennis Daughter because we now know who Dennis is. There you we go. know what mm-hmm. Dad is. Even the song Dear Dennis is got a hard beat. She's still rapping grimy, but she's emoting about what it felt like to lose her dad right, right. and and to try to talk to him and hear his voice. And I think in this climate. So many people are chasing notoriety, hits, TikTok hits, all of this. They might not have gotten a chance to dig deeper. And so missing that element sometimes makes it hard for people to say, oh, that's going to be the next one to carry the torch. Mm. Sure. Because we, we haven't had a chance to see that that side of the artistry yet. The personable side of artists. Yeah. And I mean, back in the days, that's what it was. Like, mm-hmm. your debut album was a chance for people to get to know you. Like, well, all right, if I'm listening to this album, I know what, where he's from. Yes. I know about his parents. I know how he grew up. I know what part of whatever city he's from. And, like, now you're right. Like, it it hasn't been that. Like, it's like, okay, well, if this is the sound right now, my whole album will sound like this. Or if this is who's hot, I'm just going to put these people on. Not, oh, this person fits this story or this person fits this sound, so we're going to specifically get this person, you know, like. And this is why I love my guests. Y'all got some great judges we here with me today. <laughs> no, it's a great point because you made me just think about Eve for a minute when she first came mm-hmm. out. I knew she was from Philly. Mm-hmm. I think she got an album on there yeah. called Philly. We knew she Philly, was a stripper. Philly we cheese. Knew, we knew she, she didn't care. We knew she had tats, tats on her titties, yeah. like, and we we loved her for that. We knew she yeah. danced at the Golden Lady and was stripping for Mace. Like we knew her story. <laughs> we knew she was messing with Stevie J. We, we knew her story. story. We grew but, up with her. But we also knew she was a pit bull, bull in a skirt who was <laughs> battling everybody in Rough Riders and went through the training camp. And please know? give her credit because we all want to marry a billionaire. Okay. <laughs> so one of the best alone. come up stories <laughs> ever in hip hop. Honey, that's all I'm. <laughs> like, they, heard, they heard from Eve since. She had six times and everything. We had a tweet. <laughs> not a tweet, not a bottom. So back to Lotto. So thank I know really quick, Zane, I'm gonna ask you this because you was like kinda looking at me sideways because you feel like she should be higher on the list. Cause you said something about this is her year. Why do you feel like it, this is her year? I feel like this was more so her year. Like that put it on the floor, like she did that. Yeah, and I mean, I don't get in the middle of it, but she said what she had to say. She said what she well, she said it she with put her, her chest. Shit on it. Like, ha <laughs> I don't care who you are, and I'm coming out with more music, and I'm coming out with more music, and I'm gonna make you gag. Yes, um, and then she had the uh, song "Seven" with Jug Cook. Cook. Oh, is Jun- that the age? Jun- Cook from Jun- uh, Cook. BTS. Mm-hmm. BTS. Yeah. yeah. So where, you know, where they from? Me, I know what that's Korea. about. Yep. Yes, that that K-pop group. That I mean, crossover. The numbers I'm are talking crazy. about a billion like streams in like overnight. I did a record with them. It's crazy. And if I yeah. could speak to that real quick, because that's crazy to do a record with such a huge group like BTS. And just recently, she was getting dragged on social media for doing s- features with nobodies, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. You see how she said she was in the trenches doing a record with the with, with uh, the uh, Mellow Bucks, Bucks. right? Mm-hmm. Mouse and Chip, yeah. Yes, and how can y'all speak to her not staying true to the culture of hip hop? Everybody doesn't have to be a mainstream artist for her to. Sh- lend her talents to that's right and um you looking at me so you're not familiar with that so she was no, getting no, no. dragged i didn't know she yeah i didn't know she yeah. was getting dragged for that yeah, th- yeah so a fan everything. of hers said lotto we really want to support you but stop doing features with nobodies and she said first of all at one point i was a quote unquote nobody yeah, right. you yeah. know and it's not about that it's about the respectability of this thing like i like this artist i want to get on the feature so just for me bring it up um jug Cook? John Cook, yeah. In the grand scheme of things, you don't get no bigger than that, you know. And then why can't she do records with that? And like you said, go 
in the trenches and do records with other people that may not be mainstream, but still lend her talents and kill it when she does. So that was, you know, that one of the reasons why she's on my list. That goes back to the point that we're making about like this undue criticism women artists get because that's how Drake has remained relevant for mm -hmm. his whole career. Child, talk about Migos were nobodies when he jumped on Versace. Oh my God, great uh, point. Block Boy JD, I, I haven't heard him since he did the record with Drake. I mean, no, and that's a fact. You know, no disrespect to my man. Um, or and and or just not waiting for the record to be that big to jump on it. To too jump as on well, it, you know what it saying? keeps you relevant. It inspires the artist. It's a whole. And I also think that it's a reflection of her confidence. Yeah. Like we gotta give her that, cause like you said, female artists, we worried about yeah. every damn thing, how we look, how we this, how we that. Mm -hmm. What are people gonna think? Just be like, fuck it. Like I'm here to have fun. I'm here to yeah. make music. I'm gonna be making music forever. Like yes. that's what Lotto gives us. Like even the other day when I was looking, I'm like, damn, this girl really be having a, a party every year. Like she really, <laughs> she really be having a whole themed out. But I need to go to one of Lotto parties. You know what I'm saying? Like, but she's creating her one. space for herself, and it's mm -hmm. like I love just seeing her have real fun. Like mm. you can tell it's not. Oh, I brought my homegirl that I talk to sometimes, but she knows I'm the cool B, you know, to come hang out with me for the video. It's like, no, I got my real friend mm -hmm. that I've been with, <laughs> that we walk around in, 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 in Walmart with, you know, <laughs> we do ratchet <laughs> shit. And yeah. If you catch me, like, this is where we going to be. And I love that because it shows yeah. that she's still human. Like, yeah. I think everybody needs that little slice of humanness to help their brand, you know, get to that level. And it's just like, you can't be mad at that, bro. Shout out to Lotto. Shout out to you. You made some great points, the both of you. Uh, magazine covers, I said Double XL. She did four 30 under 30. Cosmo, she was on the cover of Cosmopolitan. BET Awards, she won Best Female Rap mm -hmm. Artist this year. Mm -hmm. Not to mention her endorsements. Sprite commercials with Eric B. and Raquel. Grubhub, I think it's Grubhub, Christina Milian. <laughs> like, the <laughs> sis yeah. is working. She, she, may, she might not have put out an album. But let's not um, undermine my girl's relevancy. And mm -hmm. that's why she's number six on my list. And also, my man, my man, my man. My man, my man. <laughs> like that. Oh, my man. <laughs> Thank you to my man. <laughs> <laughs> Alone, that went viral. People right. are making videos talking about my man, my mama. Thank you to my mama. Thank you to my man. Like, remixing and we that. And we still pretending like we don't know who her man is, too. <laughs> that's a whole nother <laughs> other level of, of, of power. Okay? We all in on it. Because we all in on it. We win, sis. Go on them trips. Get flown out, baby. <laughs> 21, 21, 21. <laughs> okay, let's go to the. <laughs> Sis, keep it a secret as long as you want to. If it's working Don't for you. Care. If it's working for you. The rest yeah. of us doing the same thing. Okay. <laughs> that's my girl, Zayda Ray. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah. Number five. Oh, God. A lot of people give her a bad rep. I. I'm going to let y'all take it. Number five goes to Ice Spice. 